Hello, my friends. We're at Automate today, and I got my buddy Tyson with me. Why do I have Tyson, you might ask? Well, he's a legend in this sector, and we're going to talk about automation, what excites him, what excites me, what we might find today, what we're hoping to see today, and a couple of stories that you might want to hear about his journey along the way and how people have started to embrace automation in areas where previously there might have been a little bit of nerves or even a distaste because I can do it myself. I don't need robots to take my job. That is actually not the case. We're going to learn a bit more. Tyson, let's start with Automate. We're here today. Let's talk about why you're here and what you hope to see. I'm just walking around looking at uh, trying to find some new uh, technology out there to help our company uh, succeed. Uh, it's very hard trying to get uh, qualified individuals and somebody that's going to continue working at a very hard pace uh, uh, and trying to make it easier and safer for everybody out there. Uh, with automation, a lot of times you're creating many jobs. Um, a lot of people don't believe in that. They think you're taking away jobs, but that's not the case. We need always operators. We always need people to be around, uh, robots to guide, and sometimes they make mistakes too, uh, but we need uh, need them be, be safe, basically. That's the biggest thing that helps, helps our company succeed. Uh, putting out the product is very important to us. The more we put out, the bigger the bonuses are for everybody, um, including the operators. So let's dive into some of that, Tyson. The first thing is, you say you want to see some of the newer technology, but you've been doing this so long. Is there anything even new to you anymore? Obviously, that's a joke because we're seeing companies pop up all over the place. We're standing in front of a seat today, and every day it feels like there's something new to learn. So even in the industry, we're learning every single day. I can only imagine if we haven't embraced it yet. So any specific technology, you're like, you know what? In the world I work in, I would love to see blank be filling the void of an issue. Do you have anything like that you're excited about? <laughs> well, in the field that I'm in right now, I currently was at the at our Pacoma plant, and there it was easy to pick out a few, quite a few of the current technology that we're using right now to fulfill our needs. Um, but the plant I just currently got over to, uh, the Rochelle plant, we ended up, uh, uh, it's a mill, so we're uh, forming uh, slits of material of, uh, steel and rolling it into a round tube and we're basically running this at basically a thousand meters a minute so these tubes are getting chopped into 10 foot sections one finger I mean it's fast so um, but we get uh, problems like our tube ends up uh, ends up getting bent a little bit or bowed or it's not a straight tube so trying to find a nice vision system that maybe can correct that, uh, you yes. know, at that speed uh, would be um, helpful. So we're trying to find, a, you know, the process for that because we do strap these tubes too. You know, when we're dialing them in, we can't, we can't have uh, um, the burrs being bad. We can't have uh, the seam being bad. We can't have a bow in it. It needs to be within tolerance for our customer. And we're always trying to make it all happen. And uh, the technology nowadays, it, it's impressive what we've done at our current plant. But there's always ways to improve. Tyson, let's roll this conversation into something else you had mentioned already. Uh, just about they're not taking our jobs. None of these things are taking our jobs. We already know the buzzword of labor shortage to begin with. And on top of that, I don't want to lift heavy things. I don't want to do the monotonous. I don't want to do the dull. I don't want to do the dangerous either. And that's what the automation's doing. I myself have had to lift big pipes and put them into machines, utilizing cranes. Where was my robot then? I myself have had to do the monotonous thousand piece job, load, unload, every 30 seconds. I was bored out of my mind as a machine. Machinist. Automation helps us with that as well. Do you have any stories of people who didn't want to allow automation to come in their facility and then once it got there, kind of changed their mind? Yeah, um, I, it's a good question because uh, down at our Pacoma plant, we had a few operators. Uh, they're, they're probably in the, around their 50s. Uh, they, I'm not going to name names, but they just uh, didn't embrace the new technology. They thought it was going to take away their jobs. And I reassured them. I said, we're not taking away your jobs. We need, it's, it's hard getting enough people right now. We're, we're growing these plants so fast, and there's not enough people out there that want to do this job. I mean, it's just plain and simple. Everybody wants to... Uh, be on a computer and drive a Tesla and get paid six-figure digits. It's just with a point, flex schedule, with a flexible schedule, <laughs> right. stay at home or whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, we end up uh, 
of these three operators, they were really against it. And I told them, I said, you, you either have to embrace it and learn it. Otherwise, if you don't embrace it and learn it, you're going to be left behind because we will find somebody to embrace it. And now I come back after we got it all, that first, you know, we had a few bugs in the system, so they, they were still a little worried about it. But after we got it running, got all the bugs out of the system, we're producing five to ten times more production than before. Their job, they just, you know, watch, make sure everything's going nice and smoothly. They're not breaking their back. They're not picking up 100-pound pieces of metal and placing it in a bender. The robots do all the work for them. All they do is do the changeovers whenever we change over from one diameter to another diameter. And uh, now I tell them, do we want to go back to the old system? They're like, no way, no way. This is the way, we love it this way. Tyson, yeah. I'm nearly 50 myself, yeah. and I'm tired of lifting things yeah. as well. The last subject I want to kind of talk to you about before we close this thing, whole thing out is competing on a global scale. When we talk about the cost of living here in the U.S., when we talk about how we're currently the second largest manufacturer in the entire world, and we're starting to pick up that pace again. People are starting to get excited yeah. about manufacturing and trades again. Thank goodness. But we're starting to pick that up again. But our, our cost of living is quite high in the world of manufacturing, yeah. in the whole world of manufacturing. Yeah. And if I can throw dozens of people at an operation, or if I can show, throw automation at an operation, I really am now balancing the scales, aren't I, of how I can still make a good living, still have a good life, live somewhere like here in the U.S., but still become cost competitive at a global scale. Can you describe a little bit of that as well? Yeah, um, well, if you're not adding automation, you have to think about it. Uh, a human, and don't get me wrong, I mean, for a robot, for every automation system, you are creating about seven jobs, roughly about seven, eight jobs. Um, most people don't realize it because you do need, uh, and some of them consist of a degree, but there are ones that you need uh, automation engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, a robot programmer. You need uh, um, operators to ha uh, handle the system once complete. You need assemblers to put everything together. Um, there's a, probably a few, few more that I'm missing, but if you don't automate, you have to think about it, the cost of everything goes up. If the more you automate, the faster you get the product out and have a good quality of a product, uh, the lower the cost will come. So if you can mass produce something at a, at a, a, a efficient rate and you can save a lot of money and pass that on to your consumers, which a lot of companies do do because they want to be competitive. So, Tyson. When I hear you speak, I'm so intrigued because we can kind of just close this out by saying automation is filling voids in jobs that don't currently have labor there because we have a labor shortage. Yep. And it's removing the jobs we don't want to do while giving us jobs we do want to do and all everything you just described. Yep. And we're making it safer too. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Uh, safety to keep everybody, keep your hands, keep your feet. Uh, that's very important to everybody you know um, the more accidents a company has the uh, more insurance goes up and that's more cost that's going to be uh, cost savings that's going to be passed on to the consumer to pretty much everybody yeah. so very well said Tyson since I am fortunate enough to be able to shake your hand Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you for paying attention to our story as time is the one thing we cannot get back. Really, really well explained, Tyson. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time too. I appreciate it.